second life of Brie Tanner. Me. Like a decade later? How long has this thing been out? Yep, 2010. If you don't know what this is, this is the companion novella to Eclipse in the Twilight Saga. I read this in celebration of the fact that we're getting Midnight Sun. I can't believe we're actually getting it. The only good thing to come out of 2020. So if you don't remember who Brie Tanner is, she is that little vampire that showed up for about five minutes in the Eclipse movie, was gonna get adopted by the Cullens because she did not want to fight. She was part of the army that that vampire Riley was putting together because he was in love with Victoria, that girlfriend vampire of the guy who tried to kill Bella, and then the Cullens killed him way back in Twilight. And so this is like her story of getting recruited to that army, how things go before it. So I'm gonna get into this because everybody knows Twilight. <laughs> If you have not read it and you don't want to be spoiled, goodbye. If you just want to know what happens in here, stick around. Why not? So we meet Brie Tanner, who is this little munchkin. She's like 17, maybe? She got turned into a vampire. She's very, like, small, kind of timid. And it turns out that Riley, this vampire, was choosing kids to turn into vampires from people who, like, would not get noticed that they were missing. Brie was a runaway. On their first night out hunting that we get to see, these kids are freaking reckless. And so this other guy, Diego shows up. He's like, you know, do you really want to go hunting with these guys? They're super gross. So she goes hunting with him and he gives her like the leftover girl. She finds to be like the nicest thing ever because nobody does that. Brie picks up one person, Diego picks up one person, and he picks up the extra person so she doesn't have to carry it even though she's definitely strong enough because she's a vampire. Oh, he's carrying the extra dead body. How sweet. And what's interesting is after they bury these people and eat a little bit more, they have to run back to the house because daylight is coming. You know you don't need to die. Like in this this world, you just glitter if you're a vampire, and apparently she doesn't know that. Diego and Brie kind of form this friendship, and they're kind of speculating about what Riley's doing, why he's turning all these kids into vampires. They figure out, like, Riley must need numbers for something. He needs an army. He doesn't need smart people because obviously he's dealing with all these morons. I feel like Riley is just that scene of Scar from The Lion King. I'm surrounded by idiots. When they go hunting, they don't make it back in time, and instead they go into this cave, but then the sun accidentally hits Brie's leg, and and Diego notices that, you know, she doesn't burst into flames. She's glittery. And so they spend the rest of the day, like, out in the sun watching each other glitter and sparkle. And for me, the writing style just, like, it didn't do it for me this time. Like, I enjoyed the story. But, like, when they're standing out there, Diego just reaches out and, like, cups her face. He's like, pretty. And then he actually kisses her. It was, like, not enough building of their relationship for me, but, you know, it's a short book. We don't have a lot of time. This is, like, the first person she's ever been friends with as a vampire, so I was like, you know what? We're just gonna go with it. They go back to the house, and everybody's surprised that they're not dead. And Raul's like, ah, uh, well, you know, Riley already thinks you're dead. I'm kind of feeling like killing you. Like, they just turn on each other so fast. He's like, I'll probably kill your little friend, too, and he means Brie. Brie is hiding behind Freaky Friend, who I thought was going to become a love interest. And apparently, like, people just don't like looking at him and it's because he has one of those special powers that makes people repulsed the way like Alice can see the future. So Fred is like, I'm not gonna let these two get killed. He stands up and just amplifies his repulsion <laughs> and people are just so grossed out they have to leave. <laughs> what kind of power is this? Okay, so Diego wants to tell Riley about how vampires can sparkle during the day and he's like, you know what, let me tell him. He trusts me and if you say that, he'll probably kill you. And so like the next day they fall after Riley and they have supersonic hearing so they're in the trees and they can hear Riley making out of Victoria. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. From context, they get that Victoria has some sort of enemy. I'm sorry. Your enemy is Bella and Edward? This is a joke. Like, I knew that this was happening in the background in the other books, but I was like, okay, so what is their name? The Vittori? It's not the Vittori. <sighs> Bullcherry. It's Volturi! I found it. So the Volturi show up to talk to Riley and Victoria, and apparently they want the Colin clan dead. So they're like fine with this, but they're like, let's keep this under the radar that we're endorsing this. For at least half the book, I was convinced that Brie had the power to make herself invisible. Every time Riley looks at her, she's like, he doesn't really see me. And I guess it was just because of Fred, but the whole time I was like, she's invisible. So Brie is wondering if Riley knows that they can sparkle, if he does not know that they can sparkle in the sun, or like if his whole purpose for not telling them maybe was just to keep them coming back. Because if they knew they could run free during the day and feed whenever they wanted and they didn't have to return, then they wouldn't because they were living in a basement and killing each other. Brie 
just as like, wh why don't we just leave? Like, Diego, we could leave. Yes, leave. I like, obviously I know how this is gonna end, but you could have left. You could have done it. You could have been free. But you didn't. So Riley's whole plan is to make all these vampire children think that they're gonna get killed by the Cullen clan because the Cullen clan wants to eat all the people in Seattle. He's like, you know how Fred can make you super disgusted by him? Well, they have a mind reader and I'm like, it's Edward! <laughs> they have yellow eyes because they're old and I was like, do you just not know about vegetarianism or, or what's going on here? Fred is trying to tell her something and he's not talking and this whole time, like every once in a while she'll mention how handsome he is. Obviously all vampires are super gorgeous, but I was like, okay, like if he's gonna be another love interest, I need him to say something. So Riley tells the kiddos that the Colin clan is keeping a pet human. <laughs> and they're like, as a snack? And Riley's like, no, like they just like her. And he's telling them, he's like, if y'all fight well together, you'll get dessert. And he passes around a shirt of Bella's and they're all sniffing it. And they're like, wow, that blood is super sweet. <laughs> Is Bella just like, this is just a thing. Like Bella is just super attractive to all vampires. But he says whoever gets to Bella first can have her, which defeats the whole purpose, at least in Bree's mind, that like they're supposed to be fighting the Collins, but obviously these vampire kids are just gonna turn on each other and go for the gold. Like they're gonna go for Bella, which is kind of Victoria's purpose, but that's not what Riley's trying to let on. And so he tells them like they're going to go and attack the Cullen clan before they can get to them. And he tells them there's four special days that vampires can stay out in the sun because of the angle of the sun. And this whole time, like after Diego has told Riley about being able to sparkle in the sun all the time and all this other stuff that he and Brie figured out, he hasn't shown back up. And I'm like, obviously he's dead. Riley is saying that Diego has been with Victoria this whole time, getting things ready for their fight, trying to figure out where the Cullens are and how to attack them. I'm just like, is anybody buying this? Like Brie is like kind of buying it. So they're about to go fight and Fred kind of drops off and he's like, um, I'm leaving. So Fred is gonna go to Canada and he's like, Brie, if you wanna come with me, like, let's go. They formed this really weird friendship where she like will leave him books and they'll play cards together, but like they don't talk. And she will like stay inside of his inner circle. That's how she's been avoiding getting killed up to this point. And Brie says, no, I have to go find Diego. You know he's dead. You should leave. I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? We get to the fight. Bree is like a couple paces behind, realizes that they're losing pretty badly because they suck at fighting. She realizes like Diego's dead. She's sure he hasn't showed up to the fight. Like your instinct was right and you should have gone to Vancouver, but no. And she's about to get killed and then starts begging for her life. And she surrenders and Jasper is showing up. And he's like, we cannot trust this. Are you kidding? And he, he can have that power to like project his feelings. So like she'll get really calm or really angry and he's trying to stir her up to see if she will attack. She's holding it together pretty dang well considering Bella's right over there. The whole jury show up expecting the Collins to be dead and find that the Collins have killed all of the newborns and Riley and Victoria, and they just see that they have Brie now, their little adopted baby vampire. And of course Jane is there. Uh, like her, she has the pain power. And she's asking Brie all these questions. She tells Jane the reason they're there was to kill the Colons so they could have Seattle. She doesn't say what she actually knows and what's actually true is that they were allowed to kill the Colons because the Volturi allowed it. Obviously the Volturi don't want the Colons to know that, so she tells this lie. She's also like mentally telling Edward the real story. So he knows and he's warned. Oh my gosh, the whole time, because Carlisle and Jasper made her close her eyes, she thinks that there are vampires that howl. And it was actually the wolves that came and helped. But <laughs> she's like, these vampire howlers, I don't know what they are. Incredible, I love it. Carlisle says that they would, you know, take responsibility for Brie and teach her how to be a, a vegetarian and have her as one of their crew. And obviously Jane doesn't want any more Collins running around. So she's like, she broke the rules, though Riley didn't teach it to you. It's still your fault that you broke our vampire rules and so we're gonna kill you. And that's, and that's just the end of the book. Edward tells her not to watch. She closes her eyes and it ends because obviously she gets her head ripped off at that point. Obviously, like it's obviously an unsatisfying ending because we knew she was gonna die. There wasn't gonna be any real help here. The only redemption was that she managed to get the message to Edward about the Volturi and she knows that Diego's death was avenged because Riley and Victoria died. Like this was a fun addition. Like it, I don't think it's really necessary to your understanding of the Twilight 
universe. But it did make me more excited for the release of Midnight Sun. So like 6.5 out of 10. What did you think? Did you enjoy it? Are you a Brie fan now? Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe so we can talk about more book stuff. My name is Caitlin. Thanks for watching. Bye. Could have gotten that sticker off the whole time. I'm so sweaty. Dust thou records. Sing it with me. Da 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 da.